Good afternoon, everyone. We'd invite you to take your seats. We're going to get started here. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have you here for what we know is going to be looked back as a historic day in Thunderbird athletics. My name is Tyler Roper, and I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Communications here at SUU. It'll be my privilege to uh, lay out the program for you today. But before I do, we would ask that everyone pull out their phone and double check that you uh, have your uh, phone on silent as a courtesy to our speakers. We also have the event live stream today and we'd like to thank Lee Byers for making that happen, as well as Ryan Steineker for broadcasting this on Thunder 91 on the radio. All right, let's get started. We will first be pleased to hear from Debbie Corum, our athletic director. And after a few comments from Debbie, she will introduce to us our new head football coach. After coach has taken a few minutes to speak, we will open a Q&A um, session for the members of the media here. We'll have a roaming microphone, so if you have a question, please just raise your hand and we'll bring it to you. After a Q&A session with coach, we invite all of you to stick around for a formal meet and greet. And feel free to come introduce yourself to coach. He's excited to meet all of you. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming to the stage, Debbie Corum. Thank you, Tyler. Thanks to all of you for being here today. It's a really exciting day for us and uh, a new era for SUU Athletics. And so it's really awesome to share it with all of you. Before I introduce, I, I just have a few people I really need to thank. And uh, I want to thank President Mindy Benson for her support during this search. Uh, her, her encouragement uh, to me and her compassion to me was very well appreciated. So thank you, President Benson. I also want to thank Jack Bishop. Jack um, is a former football coach here, an athletic director here who now resides in St. George. And um, when I was thinking through um, what I needed to know, I thought, I've only been here five years. So I don't know the history. 
and um, I need to lean on someone who does um, and who I've learned over the time that I've been here to trust. And so I called on Jack Bishop and um, he came out of retirement <laughs> and handled dozens and dozens and dozens of phone calls for us. He, um, he helped me with giving me historical knowledge. He helped me with contacting former players, former coaches, former people. He helped us um, really whittle down the, uh, the list. He took my phone calls early in the morning and late at night and never complained about the times and the number of times each day I was calling him. So Jack, thank you so much for your help. Appreciate it. I also just want to thank um, our, our um, marketing and communication staff who've just done an amazing job with graphics and, and getting the information out um, to Joey and Gabby and Carson and Tyler, both Tylers, and um, Sean. I really appreciate all that you have done over a short period of time to just try to get this um, message out in the way that we're getting it, it out today. But, I also want to thank the two committees. We actually had two committees that helped us vest the uh, applicants. One was an internal committee and one was an external committee. And I won't name the committee names, um, people, but you know who you are. And I just appreciate you for helping us vet the, uh, the candidates. So um, there are just so many people that, that uh, made this work. But the one person that this would not have come together with, uh, without was Jeff Tukawafu. Um, Jeff's been an amazing uh, support during this. His wisdom, his knowledge of the football program, his organizational skills, his taking care of every detail, um, his advice to me uh, has just been um, immeasurable. And um, He's, he's, um, he's become, I told, every, I told everybody he's become my right arm, my left arm, my right leg, and my left leg, and my heart. So it's been awesome having Jeff here um, to make this happen. So thanks to all of you. I want to just quickly tell you really quickly about the process. Um, we started out by, um, as I always, those of you who know me know I always, um, everything starts for me with the student athletes. So we started with the student athletes. Um, we started with a survey from them and some, um, and some exit interviews uh, with our football team to just hear from them what they thought they needed in a coach, in a new coach. Um, because I thought, I thought it would be remiss if we just go and not ask the people who are actually on the field with the, with the coach day in and day out um, what, they, what they felt they needed and what they wanted. And so from their um, input, we developed some criteria uh, to help us whittle down the list. I want to tell you that this was a very, very popular job. We had over 100 applicants um, and good applicants for this position. Um, it was very popular. I attribute that to our team and our, our group of young men uh, for who they are, that people wanted to come here to Cedar City and coach them. So um, it just was a really awesome, um, really awesome experience to see so many people being so interested in, in coming and being our coach. So we, um, we whittled that down, obviously had, um, had a few people that we, we ended up bringing in. We, we had a few people we did a Zoom interview with, and then we actually whittled that down and had a few people we did an in-person interview with. And I, I want to tell you that when this man um, was giving us his presentation, we asked each of our final candidates to take 90 minutes and tell us what they would do with the program. We said, we're not going to ask you questions. We want you to talk to us and tell us what you're going to do. Well, about halfway through his presentation, all I could think of is I would give anything in the world right now if I could become an 18-year-old man and come play for him. <laughs> and that's when I knew we had the right person uh, that we were interviewing. And so um, it was just really awesome when, um, when we heard, when I, after I had that experience with him, um, and he left the room that I found out that other people that were in the room had a similar experience that they, they felt this was our, this was our person. Uh, and one of the things that, we, that I was hoping all through the process is that somebody, because we had such great candidates, um, I just kept hoping that somebody would separate themselves 
and this man did. Um, so I am very, very excited. He reminds me of a former coach that was very near and dear to my heart, um, very similar to that coach who was also very successful. And I just really believe that he's going to be able to um, take, take this program to the next step where we need to go, as, especially as we join the WAC um, in July of 2022. So without any further ado, I know you're not here to hear me, you're here to hear him. I'd like to introduce to you SUU's next head football coach, Delane Fitzgerald. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Um, honored. I, I'm, I'm excited and honored. Um, need, need to thank some people before I get started. Um, Pre President Benson, uh, need, need to say thank you. Athletic Director Quorum, need to say thank you. Um, Miss Debbie gave him all, all the praise. Um, Je Jeff Tukawafu is worth his weight in gold. Um, I'm not here today if it wasn't for him in more ways than one. And then Akili Gray, um, for, for all the trips and the running that he's done during this process, um, wanted to thank him also. Um, my, my, my friend and my agent, Alexis Cobb, is sitting here on the front row, and she's flown out from the East Coast to be here today. Um, really, really honored and, and thrilled that she was able to make it out here. Um, m m moving forward, every, for everybody in this room, I'm a storyteller, okay? So you're getting ready to get the first of about a 1,000 stories you guys will hear from me. Um, but I flew into Cedar City last night at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, we, we sat there for about a half hour, and my, my luggage never made it. So, so, so no clothes. Um, and Mr. Tukawafu was, uh, was able to put some things together and piece some things together for me last night and um, uh, enough that I could um, take care of the duties and stuff this morning and, and interview some candidates this morning for assistant coaching positions. Um, and the airport promised me that my luggage would be here at 11 a.m. Uh, mountain time. So at 11.30 they informed us that the uh, flight from Salt Lake to here this morning was canceled and I had no clothes. Uh, <laughs> Um, th this everything you see on me right now was pur purchased over at Christensen's about 30 minutes ago. Uh, if you, if you see if if you see me yell if you see me yell or see a funny face, it's because the pins in these pants have stuck me. Uh, the the young man over there was really really nice, and he was able to pin my pants up enough that they they looked okay. Um, he told me to bring them back when I'm done talking, and he'll fix them permanently. Guys, I, the, the, the football players are here and alumni are here, and you, you guys want to hear what we're going to do and how we're going to be. Um, guys, football is the only thing I've ever done with my life so at the age of seven, and I'm now 45. Um, I, I told the search committee, who, who I'm thankful for, that they picked me. But, but I told them a little bit like a disease for me because um, I'll wake up every morning at 5 or 6 a.m. thinking about football and the football players and how can I improve them as players and young men and how can I improve them academically. And then I go to bed at night at 11 or 12 o'clock and I have the exact same thoughts on my mind. And, and outside of my wife and kids, my, my, my three beautiful daughters, uh, outside of them, I don't think about anything else but football. Um, so so it, it's what I do. Um, I, I know you guys out here, and there's a lot of players in this room. I know, I know you guys are coming off of a 1-10 season. Got guys will never be 1-10 again. Okay, and, and not promising national titles and not promising conference titles and stuff here today. Um, but we're, we're going to be extremely competitive. Uh, we'll have a football program that's based on a, a culture of competitiveness and competitive greatness. Um, we're going to do things the right way, and we're going to go to class, and we're going to go to weightlifting, and we're going to go to study hall. Um, we're going to go to meetings and practice, and we're going to show up for things, and we're going to show up on time. And then after we show up, we're going to work our rear ends off to be really, really good while we're we're there. Um, and, and the one thing, I'll, I'll, I'll answer questions when I'm done, but the one thing I'll promise SUU and Cedar City and Southern Utah is, is that everything we do, we're going to do it at an extremely high rate. Um, we're we're going to finish what we start. Anything we do, we're going to finish what we start. Accountability, punctuality, discipline, all those things, really, really important to me. Um, so things that I hold, hold true to myself, hold, hold at a very, very high value. Um, Without any more talking, um, questions? Check, check. What has been your connection to Utah? You said you visit, first visited here about a decade ago. Uh, what, 
what do you like about Utah and, and how, how excited you are to be here? What do I like about Utah? Everything. <laughs> Is that a good answer? I, um, I, I, was the head, I was the head football coach at Southern Virginia University, NCAA D3 University in Virginia, um, about 95% LDS population, um, great university with great people. Um, what had happened in, in the time that Southern Virginia had had a football team is they had had a hard time finding enough football players to field a team successfully in the southeast. Uh, you know, over three, four months in the fall. I had a, there was a provost there named Madison Sal, and, and the president at that time was Richard Whitehead, who, who currently resides in St. George, Utah. Um, but Mr. Whitehead and Provost Sal believed in me and believed that I could come out here and recruit and do a really good job. So for about four or five straight years, uh, each, each spring, um, each winter, I would fly into Las Vegas or Salt Lake City or into Boise, and, and I would just go through the Northeast recruiting uh, great LDS young men and, and people that we thought we could be successful with at, at Southern Virginia. Um, the first time they ever flew me out here, um, I went, I, I flew into Las Vegas, come through St. George, and when I hit Cedar City, I fell in love. So, and, and I immediately Googled, immediately Googled who the head coach was, which was Coach Ed Lamb, um, and, and then uh, befriended him as fast as I could. Um, that, I, I don't know if this is relevant or if anybody cares, but I, I tried to get a job here 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've wanted, I, I, have all, I have always thought that, that this, this university at the FCS level and this football program at the FCS level can, can be competitive week in and week out and can put together 10 straight winning seasons and can put together conference title runs. Coach, welcome to Cedar City. Uh, we're glad to have you. Thank you. What are your plans to take on the challenge of turning this football team into a consistently winning program in the future? Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to go about the task of putting together a football staff first, and, and then we're going to we're going to hire a strength conditioning coach for you guys, um, but because you need one and you deserve one, okay? Um, and then we're, we're going to take it day by day and just get a little bit better each day. Um, but but the, the things that I outlined, to, you know, we're, we're going to be accountable. We're, we're going to be punctual. We're going to be loyal to each other. Um, coaches and players are going to be loyal to each other. Um, we're going to wake up each morning with the idea of daily improvement, that, that we're going to wake up and get 1% better that day. And, and I'll explain that 1% to you guys more and more as we go. Um, but, but I'll, and, hey, it's really, really difficult math. But we've got 100 players in the football program right now. If all of you guys get 1% better each day, how much better is our football program at the end of the day? You're 100% better. And then how much better are we eight months from now when we take the field again? You know, a couple thousand, times, a couple thousand percent better. Um, and that's the things that it takes. Um, we're going to finish everything that we start. And I'm repeating myself a little bit. Um, in due time, in due time, we will be the toughest team in the WAC conference. We'll be the most mentally and physically tough team in the WAC conference. Coach, what do you expect from the jump from D2 football to D1 FCS play? Could you be more specific? Like, uh, are you expecting anything going in as, as the head coach, kind of Am I expecting a different something level to be of competition, different? I guess? Yeah. I, I played FCS football back when we used to call it 1AA. Um, but I played at James Madison, who's pretty, pretty good in football. And, and then I had the pleasure to coach at James Madison for a while. And, and then I coached at UT Martin, which is another FCS school that has had, I think they've had 12 out of the last 13 winning seasons. Um, so been around two FCS programs that do it and do it well. Um, football, football, NAI to Division Three to Division Two to FCS to Division One. Football is the exact same. Uh, blocking tackling, running to the football on defense, being fundamentally sound on both sides of the ball. Um, hip explosion, being able to explode through your hips, being able to stick your foot in the ground and change directions. The, the, those things don't change. The teams that do it best at each level are, are, the, are the teams that end up you know, playing for the national title at the end of the year. Um, football is football is football. Um, I think good football Good football coached and good football played, I think it works at any level. Our offense, defense, special team systems, that they work at any level. As you look at the roster that you're inheriting, uh, what are some things that stand out to you, strengths, things that you may need to work on through recruiting or you know, coaching up? Yeah, um, I, I see a roster uh, f full of 
great young men with an infinite potential. I, I see a roster full of young men that's looking for somebody to lead them, looking for somebody to show them uh, what, what we have to do to be successful. Um, winning's a skill. It, it, it's always going to be a skill. Winning's a learned skill. Um, we've got to learn to win. We're, we're going to learn to win off the field because they're student athletes and winning off the field is more important than winning on the field. We're going to learn to win off the field first. Um, but you ask, I, I see a roster full of young men that want to be coached and that want discipline and that have a ton of potential. So, sir, we're, we're, go we're going to, no matter what else happens, no matter what else happens, we're, we're going to get on, uh, we're going to come out of the tunnel on home games with 80 players dressed each week, and we're going to be extremely competitive for three straight hours, no matter what the score is. At away games, we're going to put 65 to 68 guys on the charter flight, and we're going to go into stadiums in Texas, and we're going to be extremely competitive for three hours, no matter what the score is. Just curious about your uh, recruiting coach. There's a couple of local guys like from St. George that just committed to BYU and just interested in, in your plan for recruiting. Yeah, our, our, our recruiting starts in Cedar City. So, so the base will be Cedar City. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do as well as we can possibly do on the Wasatch front. Um, and we're, we're going to get that buttoned up and, and make sure we're getting great players from there. And the majority of our players should come off of the 15. Uh, on, on the East Coast, we call it Interstate 15. Um, my, my brother's a lawyer out in Los Angeles, and I know he's probably watching right now. My brother calls it the 10 and the 15, which was but the 15. But we're, 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 hey, up and down, up and down Utah, and we're going to base our recruiting off of the 15. And, and then off of that, off of that, there, there's good athletes, not great football teams, okay, but there's good athletes in Las Vegas. Um, we're going to get players from Las Vegas. Um, we're going to try to do a better job in Arizona than has been done in the last couple of years and, and get that and get, get at – Phoenix, Arizona has good athletes, and that area has good athletes. Getting them here won't be, a, won't be as big a problem as getting them to stay here. Um, so we've got to work on recruiting and retention with the Arizona kids. And, and then um, we'd be remiss if we left out Los Angeles. Um, that some of y'all know this stat. And say, there's 1,350 NFL, active NFL players right now as I'm sitting here talking to you. Almost 200 of those players are from the greater Los Angeles area. By a long shot, Los Angeles is playing the best high school football in the country. And with, with there being a lot less universities out west than there are out east, there's not enough universities to recruit to 25 million people that are living in the greater Los Angeles area. But it, it, it'll start and finish with Utah. Uh, George Ramirez here. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, what are you most looking forward to about this upcoming season being our new head coach? George, I have a, you, you and I both have about 250 things we have to accomplish in our life before we get to August. And, and although everything we do each day, we're planning a little bit towards August, I, I've got a lot of stuff that I'm looking forward to between now and Monday to not even think about August. Uh, guys, you guys here in here on the team, okay? I, I'm a day-by-day, -day, daily improvement guy. Um, I, I'm, I, one more time, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my mid-40s. I want to be 1% better when I lay my head on the pillow tonight than I was when I woke up this morning. Um, and that's what I want you guys to do. We, we, we shouldn't be thinking about or looking at August right now. We should be thinking about, hey, you, you should be thinking about how you can be, get better spiritually today, how you can get better academically today, and then how you can improve yourself as a football player today. Uh, you've talked about wanting to build a tough football team mentally and physically, but in terms of philosophy, um, things that you guys or that you want to accomplish on the offensive and defensive ends of things, what are some things that your players, fans, and media can expect to see from you guys on the field? We'll, we'll be exciting. We'll be exciting. And, I, and coaches use the term multiple. We're going to be multiple on offense. When they tell you multiple, it, it gets them off the hook and they don't have to really tell you anything. Uh, <laughs> But we're, we're going to – a lot of multiplicity on offense. And um, we'll be one back, two back, no back. And here's what happens with our offense is it evolves. It, it evolves. And we don't change the plays and we don't change the offense, just who's playing well. 
it evolves. And let's, let's say we start the season and our pass game is the best thing we do. Well, we're going to throw the ball a little more than we run it if that's the way it is. And then as the season goes on, our offensive linemen get better in the run game, fullbacks, tight ends, everybody gets better. Our running backs start to catch fire. And that's what we do best at the end of the season. Um, we'll run the football more. But if you're trying to break it down, we're, we're going to be 45% run, 45% pass. And then fly sweep, the jet sweep stuff, and option will be about 10%. But, sir, sir, I've went into games where that, that fly sweep catches fire. The, the wide receivers are hitting the perimeter, and they're blocking for each other and being selfless, um, helping each other out. And that fly sweep catches fire, and that ends up being 25 to 30% of your place. On defense, again, we're going to be multiple. Um, but we will base everything. <laughs> I'm giving an explanation. Uh, we, we are multiple. We're going to base out of a 4-4, four, 4-4 four, four, four too high, and we're going to attack people. Um, I, I think I've secured a defensive coordinator and, and, and a guy that I think is, is the best in the country, and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but but getting, getting him out here the 1st of January and getting him started, um, we're going to attack people. But it'll start out of a four-man four front too high. Um, but we will get into 3-4. We'll get into 3-3 three, three stack. Um, we'll get into some five-man fronts, just depending on the situation. Over the past 10 years, our coaching staff has led the country in tackles for loss and sacks. So I, I know y'all had the young man here a couple years ago that was a national leader in sacks. Um, yeah, we, we haven't had anybody that's broken a national record over a career, but we've had a couple of guys that hold the single season record or have been the single season leader in NCAA football, which we did this past year too. Um, special teams wise, we're, we're, we're gonna attack people. We're gonna go into each game, whether we're playing Thursday, Friday night or, or Saturday at lunchtime or Saturday night, we're gonna go into each game, we're trying to score. We're trying to return kicks for touchdowns. It's not, it's not a playoff. Um, our starters on offense and defense have to play two special teams or they're not allowed to start. And then I'm not, I, run the, I run the special team, so not only do they have to play, but they have to play hard. But we're going to try to return kicks for touchdowns, and then we're going to block kicks. If you guys do your research, our, our coaching staff has led the country in block kicks over the last 10, 11, 12 years. We had a season a couple years ago, 11 games, we blocked 12 kicks. No. Quickest, quickest way to win a football game is to block a punt or return a punt for a touchdown. Quickest way to lose a game, get a punt blocked or have one return for a touchdown. We go into games trying to block a punt and trying to return a punt for a touchdown. Sometimes it's the, it's the block punt that gets returned for a touchdown. Um, we will be exciting. And as this goes on, as this goes on, getting these young men to buy in um, and, and we start, start running like a well-oiled machine, we'll get more and more exciting. Hey, Coach, looking forward to working with you and getting to know you. As you take a head coaching role at a new school, how do you balance putting together a staff comprised of individuals that you've known from your past versus people you bring in from the outside? As a, as a married guy with three daughters, the biggest balance is trying to get them here. Yeah, I have a daughter that's a gymnast and loves gymnastics, and she's out there finishing up her competition season and another one playing basketball, and we're trying to let them finish and get them out here. But that's the biggest thing to balance. Um, I don't know what's your name. I don't Spencer. Spencer, Spencer um, thank you for the question. In balancing a staff, you are looking for the best two coordinators, and if you count special teams, you're looking for the best three coordinators that you think you can get. At the, at the university you're at. Um, and then after that, you're trying to fill in people that fit. Loy Spencer, loyalty is a, is a huge, huge deal. I, I'm going to be loyal to our coaching staff and our players need them to be loyal to me. I need our coaches and our players to be loyal to each other at, at all times. Um, but after you hire great coordinators, you're bringing in guys that are going to follow that coordinator's lead, going to follow your lead as a head coach. That They don't necessarily have to be great position coaches. Sometimes the young guys, the, the young guys that, that, that'll do all the dirty stuff, they're, they're, they're the best ones. Um, but you, just like you would put a football roster together, okay, you, you're not looking for the best individual coach or player. You're looking to put together the best individual team. Any other questions from the media? All right, thank you, Coach. That'll conclude our formal press conference. Please stick around and feel free to get to know Coach. Thank you for being here today. Honored to be here. Thank you.